So, hey guys, welcome back. Uh, it's been a little while, it's 2022, and I'm gonna do a little bit something different this time. Today, I invited two people to talk about financial stuff. I know it gets a little bit scary. I did a couple of vlogs a while, while back about the economy, but we got a segment called Go For Broke. What does that mean? Uh, first of all, let me introduce you to two guys. This is Zach and this is Connor. Um, these guys are, how many years have you guys been in the workforce per se? New to the workforce, but I've been studying finance for close to six years now. Okay, and what about you, dude? Been working for about three years, maybe a little bit longer, uh, but also studying finance as well. All right, so what I'm trying to say is that these guys have been around a little bit, and you guys do some investing on your own. Yes. Right? And that's part of this conversation here, actually. What I'm trying to do is establish a, a view that's me. I'm in my 40s, late 40s, and these guys are in like their early 20s. So I'm trying to get a view and perspective. What is investment and what is the stock market and things like that to them? Because we literally have like two generation gap. Because you have parents that's kind of my age, but a little bit older for say, and then you guys are definitely younger than me. So let's just kind of start with that. The, the hottest topic right now, which is um, overall the stock market. Because it seems like all you hear is stock, like stocks keep going up, keep going up. What does that mean to you guys? How, what, do you, what do you, I mean, what is your view of that? Yeah, whoever goes first. I mean, it's just. Yeah, so basically, I always, I actually started kind of my finance journey. Um, I started heavily as a bear, and I was a person that did not believe the stock market would continue to go up and blah, blah, blah. Things are inflated. That was back in like 2016, so it's, that didn't work out super well for me. Um, as I kind of read into things and kept learning and learning and learning, um, I did kind of just realize that fighting the system probably isn't the best idea, that most of the time, most things that are in the financial system benefit more if the stock market continues to go up, and those things kind of just build on each other, and that kind of leads to that whole stocks never fall, because no one wants to see stocks fall. That's always been my views. Well, a couple, couple of things here I want to highlight, because not everyone knows what you're talking about. Did you say the word bear? Yes. What do you mean by bear market? So I always thought that the stock market was going to continue to crash and start to go down. That's why I had a very bearish view on it, that it would just continue to go on a downward trajectory. I thought things were overblown after 2008, maybe it went up too high, I thought it would continue to go down. But so just to make sure we get this straight, keep this straight, a bull market means a bull, like the bull, uh, means an uprising market. A bear market means it's going down. So this guy's been kind of being somewhat pessimistic and thinks that the market's been keep going down. Now, what is your view of the stock market and your understanding of it? Um, I originally started out kind of a little like Zach, thinking things seem a little too high. Um, but again, it's also proof wrong. Um, I usually take more of like a uh, kind of passive view of things that basically I'm just putting money there for it to grow later in life. Um, I don't really want to not waste my time trying to study more, do all of that, but I don't really want to risk losing it all uh, at this moment. Just, you know, just kind of there to make more money at this point. Okay, so you said that you lost some money originally. Yes. Okay. How did you perform in your, in your stock market? Um, overall, I mean, again, it's more of a passive approach. Um, I've definitely been burned a few times. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to kind of more so gamble on things, um, which is why I've you know kind of started to pull back as time goes on, and um, a lot more ETFs at this point, a lot more uh, blue chip companies, um, you know, Amazon, Google, Apple, those kind of things, um, and really just taking a less risky approach to things at this point. Okay, I think I should have said this from the start. Uh, first and foremost, we are not giving out any type of uh, investment advice. We are not providing guidance. We're not official trader, none of that. All we're doing is having a conversation about what is the view from a more mid-generation perspective and a younger generation as they start to have some money in their pocket. What do they do with it? And how is that perception of what is the stock market? So far, I'm hearing that initially when you invest in the stock market, for both of you guys, 
the turnout wasn't as positive. It wasn't it wasn't like gangbusters. Oh, I got rich. Yeah, obviously, right? Kind of. So when I first the back way back in the day, this is not my current portfolio view. This is a long time ago. I was taking investments in ETFs, things that actually bet against the stock market for me, like that inversely. So if the S&P goes down, this ETF goes up. That was the kind of things I was buying and trying to see if I could time when the stock market's going to crash. And those things didn't work out very well for me. So I kind of transitioned from stop trying to assume you know when the market's going to go down to just enjoy the ride up and kind of park your money in things where you can just benefit from the ride up now you guys went into a lot of the fundamentals of, of just how what about let's keep it simplistic what did you use as a tool of course the internet but what tools and internet and what websites were something that you guys used to start investigating and exploring the investment options for you guys so originally um it was more of kind of reading through the wall street journal seeing what was going on what people's outlooks were um using the free portions of bloomberg uh once you run out of articles it gets a little a little cumbersome uh again same thing with market watch um and then a lot of it just came to you know with having friends that were starting to get into the workforce hearing what they were doing at their offices stuff like that um and then really just kind of buying into what I thought was going to go up, um, and that's kind of how I got started and really, I guess, how I just kept going for the past five, six, seven years. I started a lot on Twitter. Twitter was a huge tool of mine, um, just as far as kind of getting exposure to people in the industry. Um, I think Twitter is an amazing tool because you can find people that are working professionals in investment management, um, and everyone is usually willing to tweet their own opinions on Twitter. And they don't hold so much of a company's perspective. Um, but then, like Connor said, all, all the news sites like Bloomberg and Market Watch and things like that, of course. Um, but Twitter had a pretty heavy influence in my investing career as far as like finding people that I agreed with. Um, and then I, I love seeking alpha because I just like I like prefer individual people's perspectives versus like here's what Vanguard thinks about the market. I just think individual people have individual people have a better perspective on. It's less bias, less corporate bias. It's more of like a dig, like dug deep kind of view on things. Okay, let's talk about the 2022 trend or slash 2021, as we you know, a lot of people lock the codes and things like that. Reddit, what, how much value should one put in Reddit? Uh, Any more, not much. Yeah. I think originally um, the Wall Street bets, uh, our thread, Reddit thread, was actually very helpful. Uh, I would use that every now and then. Um, some of the top guys in there are very uh, high-level traders, uh, high-level account managers. So I think that you know there was things that you would get from there. Not really insider information, but just hey, this is where where we think things are going. Then when it came to GameStop, when it came to the GameStop craze, um, that's when it got out of hand. That's when you started seeing a lot more people basically coming with just completely wrong information and wrong opinions. So now, I think it's irrelevant. Not irrelevant, but very hard to figure out what you want. Yeah. I think originally, like two, three years ago, uh, it was very helpful. I think I've been a member of that Reddit thread for like five or six years. Like it gives you some good things to think about. I never really exercised a whole lot of them, but now it's, it's not really useful. So we're definitely more towards the garbage route and let's sort of value. Yeah, there used to be quite a bit of good, like we're saying, do your research elsewhere for our podcast. There used to be a lot of really good research done on Wall Street Bets that actually involved like, hey, this is what they said in this earnings call and these are these projections. And now it's just the whole like a lot of moon emojis and this is going to go to this price with nothing to support it. It's just like GameStop's going to $500. There's no reason why. There's no valuation or anything. So AMC and things like that, that's kind of that's kind of out of the water now, huh? I yeah. <laughs> he's saying yeah, he's saying I, I, I don't personally person yeah. think so. I think anytime there's anything that someone thinks you can get rich quickly, I think that thing is bound to spike again eventually. Okay. Okay, let's so let's let's uh let's just shift gear a little bit because we're obviously we're not like professional financial advisors, but again, it's about the perspective, right? And the understanding crypto, 
The conversation about crypto has been going on for years now. It started out really with Bitcoin back in 2009. And needless to say, it's gone through a roller coaster ride. We've seen tremendous high value, meaning that it went from like 0.009 cents of, of a cent to something astronomical to like 65K, I think. 65K. And as of today, I think it's in the mid 30s area. High 40s used to be saw a spike in the last two days. There you go. So, so low 40s. So, low 40s as of today. So, with that being said, what, first of all, what is crypto in your mind? What, what is it? What is Bitcoin? In my mind, I've, I've been involved with Bitcoin since about 2014. Um, back when it was very hard to get, you had to actually go through other people to acquire it. Um, I've always just kind of seen it as a way of transferring money. That was the point of it to me. Um, is a good way, it seemed like a very easy way for me, especially I always thought internationally, if I'm in America and someone's in England and we don't want to go through a bank to send money and have them go from dollars to pounds, Bitcoin seemed like an easy way of, I buy Bitcoins and dollars, I send you those Bitcoins, you transfer those Bitcoins into pounds, and boom, no intermediary, we just send each other something. Um, that's why I always thought the best purpose of it was, and that kind of seemed like where it was going at the beginning, but I think it's kind of evolved into more just a speculative asset of, I think we can get Bitcoin to X price, and that's kind of what I think it's turned into, is more of just betting on the price rather than having an actual use. Yeah, I think a lot of the same thing. I think, again, it's mostly speculative at this point. Oh, Bitcoin's going to the moon, time for me to hop on. And with no real reason as to why. Um, but I do agree, I, I think of it more as an easy way to transfer money, a way for you to transfer money if you don't want people to know you're transferring money, um, kind of along those lines. I, I don't think it's a... Uh, yeah. I, I, mean, I think we could go on for hours about what crypto or Bitcoin could be used for, right? There's the above the board, meaning that you know, something that a, a, a treat as a traditional currency. What I mean by traditional currency is like a regular tangible uh, US dollar, it's a currency. But there are some underground aspects, which now in 2022, there are some regulations by the government, not just US, but the, you know, all around the world start to monitor that. And they want taxation because at the end of the day, it's about also, what we can give to Uncle Sam, what Uncle Sam can capture, right, from where we're sitting. But how does that work? How do, how do you see that working out? I mean, as, as the transaction, electronic transaction, and now it's becoming reported, it's not being taxed yet, per se, it's being reported, like on 1099 and things like that, on platforms like Venmo and Zale and things like that. How do you see the, the, the interaction with Bitcoin? With, with all that's happening in 2022 and forward, from where you're sitting? I see a lot of people getting in trouble for not reporting their capital gains because they think, well, the story of Bitcoin, right? I mean, there's been several of, it's a store of value, it's this payment system that works, um, it's a inflation hedge, it's a dollar hedge, all these things have been thrown around. One of the biggest things was it's kind of a way to separate yourself from the current financial system. It's like that was a big pitch. It's like this out of the box thing that hasn't been used before. So I think a lot of people are thinking like crypto and dollars don't go together. Like you're saying, the government wants their share. So I think a lot of people are gonna not report their gains because they think it's some separate thing, but we'll see how the IRS handles all that. Yeah, I think that it's, you can really only tax the capital gains of it. Um, the way that most of the crypto wallets are set up is you can't tax any transactions because you don't know who the transaction is 10 minutes later. So I think that, like you said, a lot of people seeing as what happened this year in crypto, a lot of people are going to get burned with not reporting, you know, it has to be a, quite a lot of money for them to report, not report to get in trouble. But I think people are going to get burned probably April, May because they're just like, I'm not going to report this $35,000 I made in crypto this year. Okay. I mean, I, I think, you know, let's, let's take a step back, right? Let, let's get down to just a basic question. Why does crypto go up? Like, why does Bitcoin value go up? What, 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 do you, what is it that 
I mean, I, don't, I know we don't have the definitive answer because there's you know multiple ways of assessing it. But what what do you believe is the some of the core reasons why Bitcoin gains value? It's supposed to be there's a finite population. Also, don't forget. So what is it? Is it is it the the rarity and the scarcity of it? What is it that's making it go from one penny to fifty plus or sixty plus thousand per coin? I think it's just demand. It's like, oh, I, I want to get into Bitcoin right now. So more people just start buying it and it goes up. And then you have people that all of a sudden just sell. And that's why it starts to crash, go down, go down. Uh, I mean, I saw on Twitter, I think last week, someone bought like $9 million in Bitcoin at one point and everybody started buying after that. And that's why we saw what, like a $5,000 spike last week yeah. because one person tweeted out that he bought eight, nine million million, $9 whatever it was. Yeah, and I think to build on that with the demand thing, I think that's what it is basically. Is there's it's in demand right now, and I think the reason there's so much demand for it is if you bought it and you made, and let's just call it a thousand bucks. I'm like, I want to make a thousand dollars, then I buy it. I make a thousand dollars, and Connor's like, Wow, you two made a thousand dollars. I want to make a thousand dollars, and then he buys it, and that just keeps going around and around and around and around. And the only way to buy something is to buy it slightly higher than where it's at, because no one's going to sell it to you if you don't. So as buys keep coming in, like, it's just going to drive the price up. So I think it's watching other people make money. If no one was making money, I don't think anyone would be buying it. Same thing with GameStop and AMC. If no one was making money, no one would be willing to play. But if you see all the people around you making money, you feel left out. So you just start buying and keep going. And when you hear things like Bitcoin to 100000 things like that, you might just think, why not? And then it gets to the point where one person goes, I've made enough money and they sell nine million dollars worth of Bitcoin and then it goes down thirty thousand dollars in two weeks. So So I, I I'm hearing the fundamental for those kids and those individuals out there that went to college or studying economics, it's still supply and demand. That's that's the basis of it. Pretty much. It's about people's desire and what's the value of that that starts creating the fluctuation of value, right? Mm-hmm. I think that's what it comes down to. Listen, we can go on hours and hours about talking about crypto and the influences and what 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 a straddles a transaction and who knows what the governments will do with it, right? Uh, as time progresses, but we know for a fact that they are coming. The regulations are coming. The taxation rules are coming. So we just have to be mindful of it. And what we will, you know, go out there and warn people is that be transparent. Do not try to hide money from Uncle Sam because he will come and get you. Um, so with regards to crypto, where do you think it's going to go from here, from in 2022? We've seen the volatility, right? I mean, that's always been part of the trade with crypto. It always goes up and down, it goes through its motions, but it doesn't have a pattern. I think that's the biggest struggle right now, not a sustainable um, uh, type of pattern that a, a investor can truly estimate and evaluate cycle. But from where you're sitting as youngsters, you know, new to the investment game, where do you see that cycle? And what influences? What what have you been seeing as the large influence of that fluctuation? Um, personally, I think it will all continue to increase in value. Um, specifically, the force that I think will influence that the most is social media. Um, as with everything, there's influencers. Um, and again, like I was saying, watching people get rich, there's no place where people like to show off getting rich more than social media. And with things like the metaverse being installed and all these different coins coming out to be used in the metaverse, um, I think things like that are going to continue to increase in value as the more uses of them come up, like we're saying the metaverse, um, there's those coins like um, Sultana, I think is one that's being used. Cardano. Cardano, yeah, and like things like that that are being used in Facebook's new platform, or Meta's new platform, I guess I have to say. Um, I don't know if they'll continue to go up steadily. I imagine it'll be a lot of this with big crash, and it'll go up, big crash, but I, if you had to ask me my current outlook, I would say I'm bullish on crypto. Okay, so he's... So Zach here thinks it's still going to keep rising? Yeah, kind of along the same lines. I think the big cryptocurrencies that we always hear are going to continuously go up, go up, go up, come down, go up, go up, come come back down. Um, and they're going to come down less and less over time. I, I, I think that everything's just going to keep rising. 
I think these um, these smaller coins that you see are a lot of them turn out to be scams. They're just going to keep popping up because again, it's very hard to regulate these things. Um, so I think that those scams are going to keep coming out, um, but the big coins that everybody knows are just going to keep going up. Yeah, I mean, well, the crypto space, there, there's tons of coins out there. Which one is viable, which one's credible, that's hard to evaluate, right? But one thing, I mean, one coin for sure that pops out of the bunch is absolutely Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, as much as I was a pessimist with that coin or that, or that, or that virtual currency, it is here to stay at some way, shape, or form because there's just so many people, businesses, and just things involved in it, right? So it's not going to evaporate overnight. And even countries at this point, right? There you go. So sovereignty and it just countries, everyone's involved. In it. Yeah. So Bitcoin it is absolutely here to stay. Um, the evolution of the cryptocurrency environment, that still remains to be seen as it reshapes. You brought up a pretty good point, which is the metaverse. And, and I think I'm going to reserve that for another day's uh, yeah. type of discussion because that's a whole world of its own, literally. Um, but from the crypto perspective, both of you two are very bullish on it, um, you know, from your perspective. Uh, my perspective is, is that I am bullish on it, but it's still going to go through this volatility. I think that uh, overall, you know, there's some credibility to it, just as we said just now, countries are invested in and so forth. So there is something in there. Um, but as we see the tax, the taxation, the regulatory aspects, bodies start influencing that, we're going to see what type of kind of headwind that type of currency will start to, to feel and face and how does it deal with it. Um, again, I'm not going to touch upon it too much. There's still the under the table aspects to Bitcoin, right? Uh, all the for say, you know, type B is the transaction. Um, so it's remaining to be seen. What is in simple, try your best in the simplest term. How would you explain cryptocurrency to a 10 year old? Sorry, I'm here. Um, to a 10 year old, I would explain cryptocurrency as is it money? Can Uncle Bob give you a, a, a gift card of? Yes. So basically, Bitcoin. Yeah. Think of it as the best way everyone always describes it is a spreadsheet, right? If you've ever opened up a blank Excel file and there's just all the cells with the little grid lines dividing each cell, those are your blocks on the blockchain. So what you can do is basically you are purchasing the right to a cell in your Excel spreadsheet, basically. And to buy a block on your spreadsheet, you pay whatever Bitcoin's worth. And one coin gets you a block, or however it translates on that spreadsheet. And basically, you own this chunk of the spreadsheet, and you can transfer this chunk of the spreadsheet to someone else. Um, essentially, it's just the right to own part of the blockchain. And if someone, and it's, if you're thinking, like, why would that be worth anything? Think about it as a piece of land. Like if I have this piece of land and someone thinks it's worth more than what I paid for it, I still make a profit. Regardless of what the asset is, if if I have it and you're willing to pay me more for it, it will go up in value. So that's kind of the way I would think about it. What about you, Connor? Uh, short answer, yes. I think it's basically money at this point. Um, if you can give it to somebody else, for either another dollar value or a good or a service, it's money. Yep. Okay. Whether or not it's printed, that I, that's my definition of money. Yeah. I mean, my daughter makes me buy her Roblox box. I think that's what it is. I mean, yep. in some ways, that's another version of virtual currency, except just in that environment, right? I'm sure all you parents out there at my age had to buy Roblox box sometimes along the line or Fortnite virtual currency, but it's kind of the same token, right? Um, but, you know, I think crypto, we'll continue to have discussions around crypto. If you guys, you know, want to continue talking about it. But, um, you know, we just started to open up the, the, the Pandora's box with regards to, to finance. Because I know throughout my other blogs, you know, I talk about cars, um, you know, just the cars and just DIY stuff. But I think this is something that's, that's important for a lot of viewers because 
We're coming from various perspectives in the financial aspects. We're going to have multiple sessions of this, um, you know, and uh, crypto is just the opening. Um, you know, you heard the guys about the forecast, the value going up and down in regards to crypto. But again, do not take our advice or our guidance to the bank. Do not do that. Make your own judgment. We're just here to talk about it and see how we feel and uh, what we think. Um, you know, do we have our own money in it? Some of us do, some of us don't. We have different, you know, appetite with regards to how we want to uh, spend our money. But at the end of the day, crypto is here to stay, especially Bitcoin. Uh, but with that being said, um, a Super Bowl is around the corner. What do you guys think? Now, this you, you might want to take to the bank, but again, to each of his own. What do you what do you pick for this coming weekend, guys? Well, Connor's clearly going to pick Bank. Or yeah, because like why would he wouldn't pick the Rams? Like, I am a Rams fan. Huge Joe Burrow fan. Hold on, I am a Rams fan. So bias, a little little biased here. Uh, I think it's either going to be a very close game down to the last drive, or it's just going to be a blowout uh, from the Rams. I think it all depends on what Bengals defense shows up. If you get that second half defense from last week, it's going to be a close game again. If it's the first half defense, I don't know, 41 17, something like that, it, it, it's either going to be a two point game or a 21 point game. I don't think there's any in between. I think, I hate the Rams. I'm a 49ers fan, so I, am, I despise the Rams. But if I had to put money on the game, I would pick the Rams. Um, I do think it would be close through most of the game. Um, I think it's going to heavily depend on two things A, the Bengals O line and then B, Jalen Ramsey versus Jamar Chase, which is going to be amazing. Um, whoever gets the best of that Jamar Chase, Jalen Ramsey matchup will probably help decide the outcome of the game pretty significantly. So just make sure I get this on record. Both of you two guys are for one range. Hey, before I go, what is the line as of right now? I think now? it's a four still, so I've taken Rams as the points. So Rams are favored by four right now, at this moment? I, I think so, yeah. Okay. My pick, believe it or not, I'm going to pick the Bengals. Um, just because I think, you know, there's they're the Cinderella story in a lot of ways. And um, and they, you know, they, they've been starving for decades. Yeah. So hopefully it will come through the phone and we'll see what happens, right? Uh, but with all that being said, hey guys, um, any questions, anything, put it down below, throw it out, any topics, anything you'd like to cover, um, give us a comment, feedback, put it down there. Um, and um, we'll look for you guys in the next vlog. And this is going to be a three-part episode, okay? At least, at minimum. And if you guys like it more, we'll have more. All right, guys, till then, peace out.